All right, everyone, welcome. It is Thursday, November 30th, 2023. Andy Owings here with you. It is about 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll go ahead and do our pre-market forecast here, starting off with the indices. Yesterday had a really good long trade on the Russell 2000 for about 2200 in profit across three different challenge accounts. I'm currently doing a challenge just to have a little bit of fun and see what all the fuss is about. I'll go ahead and film my challenge trading today as well and upload it to the channel. So be sure to check in for that later. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the pre-market forecast, starting with the S&P 500. What you can see here is that yesterday we got shot down out of all that resistance, and that was pretty unexpected to be quite honest, but I did get my money out of the Russell before that happened. And that also reminds me, a really important point is once you take your trade, you've executed your plan, you've made your money, walk out the door, leave the casino, take your money. Don't stay there and be a sucker and give it all back. So I left yesterday, kept the money. I'm really happy I did that because you can get trapped in these reversals, especially right now with all this volatility and chop, and you don't want to give back your profits. So when you get your profits, get away from the computer. It's really important. All right. Yesterday was a really good illustration of that. So today, what do we have? That's what's important, right? We're forecasting for today. We're not looking back in time. We've got a lot of support here on the S&P 500. I still think that this congestion support level is going to be very strong ultimately and win this battle. So today I'm going to be looking to go long the indices. I haven't decided which one yet. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other markets as well. Let's look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is also giving us a nice support pattern there into the daily congestion support zone. But I like the E-mini S&P 500 better. Why? Because we're closer to the overall congestion support level. If you notice, the NASDAQ here is right in the middle of the congestion zone right there, right? So if it's in the middle of the congestion zone here, um, it just means it can fish lower before pushing higher. I don't think it's going to do that, but it could whereas the S&P 500 closed down near these lows. So we're coming out of all that support. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us take another run at these highs up in here today. So I'm going to be looking to employ the same strategy today as I did yesterday, which is just waiting for the intraday price action to confirm that number one, my analysis is correct. You know, I think we're going to be heading up today because of all the different support levels we've got in play. So if that's the case, price should be heading to the upside and I want to look to get in on a pullback, right? That's the easiest way to trade. Don't fight the energy. Go with the energy. So did that yesterday on the Russell. Going to try and do that today on the S&P 500. Got to forgive me. I got a little bit of a sore throat coming, but I think with all the gymming, the sauna, the cold showers, we can keep it at bay. So we'll do our best. All right. So... Looking at the Dow, you can see we're already pushing higher. So Dow continues to lead there. I think the S&P 500 will definitely catch up, especially with that pattern we're seeing. So that's just reconfirming our view of the long side today for the S&P 500. Remember, we do have the PCE number coming out. That's important uh, inflation number that the Fed tracks very closely. So that could be the juice to continue to uh, fuel this Goldilocks landing scenario that we all know is BS, but it is the narrative and the narrative drives the market, not the truth. The truth doesn't drive the market. The narrative drives the market. So it's really important to keep that in mind. So we'll see what that PCE number is like at 8.30. I'm going to start my trading at 8 o'clock. I'll record it. We'll watch it together. I'll upload it to the channel later. I'm still uploading videos and taking down videos. I'm just kind of trying to get a feel overall for the direction of the channel and where things are going. And I got to keep playing with the uh, different ways to do things here. So that's what it's all about. All right, let's go ahead and look at the Russell 2000. Uh, this is what we milked yesterday. We got long from about 1813, if I remember, and got out at, I want to say 1820, um, made $720 per account across three account accounts on two contracts. So it was good. Just basically took the meat out of that move to the upside. Uh, and I did film that, but um, I went ahead and took that video down just because I'm playing with the formatting. So we'll film it again today and we'll see how that goes. All right, let's go ahead and look at the treasuries. You can see here, it looks like we've got a little bit of a resistance pattern here on the 10 year. So if treasuries are gonna give back a little today, that could weigh on stocks remains to be seen. Certainly not 
anything I want to trade there today on treasuries. Let's go ahead and look at the ultra bond. Yeah, we're coming out of resistance here. So could be a little bit of a reprieve in this rally with treasuries, which means what? Maybe rates will tick back up, which means who knows? Maybe that PCE number will come in hotter than expected and stocks won't like it. We won't know until the number comes out. But right now what we're seeing in the treasury space is that uh, Bonds are being sold at least to start the day and that rates are edging up as a result. So let's go ahead and look at the gold, silver and copper space. Yeah, gold pulling back a little bit here, but you've got a lot of support. I don't really see anything I want to trade there on gold today. Remember, I'm looking for the market that I think is going to give me the best opportunity for the upcoming day. Uh, two days ago, that was copper. That was a great call. Yesterday was a Russell. That was a really good call. And today, so far, it's the S&P 500. But let's wait and see. Silver as well continues to be uh, pretty well supported here as we scream to the upside, but nothing that I want to partake in at this moment. Let's look at copper. Yeah, copper is kind of a mess now. This was back here, the support level we got in on a couple of days ago, and that was a great trade. Uh, but for now, we'll kind of let this work itself out in the middle of the range. You don't want to get involved in these markets when you're in the middle of the range. It's just not a good idea. It's a good place to um, either lose money or give back profits you've already made. You want to take markets that are clean. You know, you want volatility to be at a decent level, but not too much. You want to find that sweet spot. That's what you're looking for, especially if you want consistent success. All right, let's go ahead and look at crude oil. Looking at crude here, we're off to the races. We've got that big crude number coming out today as well. Uh, whether or not OPEC is going to continue to cut, um, we'll see how that comes out. I'm not going to be trading crude today, but it does look like crude is off to the races. Perhaps we put in a bottom. This truce with Hamas and Israel might be over soon. So, you know, we could have some fresh hostilities there, which could put a good, uh, you know, pack of fuel under this crude oil market and push it to the upside. So we'll see how that plays out. And we definitely will partake in crude oil, but only when it gives us good patterns that are matching up with our types of trading, which today it's not. So leave that alone, but looks bullish nonetheless. Natural gas. You remember from the video yesterday, it is rounding the corner down here. I do think we have a lot of support. So natural gas, I'm going to be keeping a close eye on over the course of the next few weeks because this monthly chart here looks like an exhaust to the downside for a reversal back up. That's what it looks like right now. Remains to be seen, but that's why I'm watching it very closely. Let's look at corn, wheat, and soybeans. Corn, you have a nice congestion entrance move to the upside there. Uh, that should probably put some support here at the middle of the moving average envelope, but it's not a pattern I want to mess with. Why? Because the weekly is still trending down and the monthly is trending down for now. I think these might be putting in uh, their bottoms here with natural gas, but it's still a little too early to tell. But I don't want to go long right now corn if I'm fighting that weekly and monthly energy. It was a different story with wheat, which we'll look at now the other day. Uh, this exhaust on wheat was a different story because you had a huge exhaust right into the extension trend line. You can see that we get from connecting this high through that low, extend it out. Boom. You got a nice support level there. Huge volume. You can see coming in right there. That is a telltale sign of an exhaust. So even though we were against the weekly and the monthly energy there to the downside, we had a very good opportunity for an exhaust. I saw this on that day. I elected to trade copper instead, which worked out fine for me. But wheat was my second pick for the day based on that exhaust to go long. But corn right here is a different story. There's no exhaust today. You're still fighting that energy. So that's why I'm going to leave it alone. Same thing with wheat. You can see we're now pushing higher, but I'm not going to chase this up here on wheat. Let's look at soybeans. Yeah, soybeans, uh, also nothing to do there. We'll finish it off with just looking at a couple of the currency futures. We'll look at the euro first. So you see the dollar, pretty big recovery today. That's impressive. Um, I hadn't looked at these markets until right now when I'm doing this forecast, and the dollar looks very strong. Right now, up about 0.6% against the euro, up about a half a percent against the pound. So that's pretty interesting with that dollar strength coming in. We've got Treasury selling off a little bit. So, you know, not really a fear trade per se, but that's a pretty big move overnight for the dollar. Um, so I still like stocks to the long side, but we're going to have to see how the dollar and Treasuries look as we're heading into that news announcement at 830 to see if we want to participate because, you know, stocks will really get a nice 
bit of juice when you know bonds are steadily rising you don't want bonds you know taking off to the upside right because that's a fear trade that's a rush into bonds out of fear it's a safety play right you don't want to see that what you want to see is steadily rising bonds like we're seeing now that means steadily declining rates which is helping the stock market you also want to see a steadily weakening dollar in that same environment and a low vix then you will see the stock market really get the most benefit and start holding on to those gains. So I have a feeling the stock market sold off yesterday as a precursor to what we're seeing today with the treasury space and the U.S. dollar. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that heading into the open, especially heading into that news announcement at 830, the core PCE. All right, let's go ahead and look at the pound and wrap it up here. No need to look at all the others. Yeah, this pound also just pulling back the dollar, getting a little bit stronger, um, probably just to this strong congestion support level is my guess. I don't think this is a going to, you know, accelerate to the downside, but we'll see. In fact, we may suck up off of these extensions. You can see here on the euro, you got three of these extensions in a row. Uh, that's a pretty big deal with Owings market analysis. You've got one, two, three. That should make this congestion support level very strong. Of course, you've got the middle of the moving average envelope trough right here coming across as well. So there's probably going to be a lot of support here, especially given the fact the weekly is screaming to the upside and the monthly's gone for a very powerful congestion entrance move uh, back to the upside there. So I do think this dollar strength we're seeing overnight is uh, you know probably just temporary. We'll see how it plays out through the end of the day. Uh, based on what I'm seeing across all these markets, a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of whether risk is on or off. But looking at the stock indices, Again, you know, you are pushing against that extension there on the S&P 500. You can see right here, there's that extension. There's the congestion right at 4,600. That's why the weekly is having a little bit of trouble so far. But this thing is still highly elevated and there is a lot of support here. I mean, I think that this support by the end of the week today and tomorrow is going to want to fire up and test those yellow dot trend lines right there, the high connector, the low connector, they tend to act like magnets. I don't think we're done just yet. So let's see if we can get up to 4,600, maybe a little bit higher today or tomorrow. We'll see if that happens. But I'm going to be looking for evidence that this support on the daily for the S&P 500 is indeed strong and wants to push us up here. That's what I'm going to be looking for. May or may not happen. We'll see. That's the beauty of day trading. We've got our thesis. We're preparing with our analysis. And then we just go into the day and let the market tell us if our forecast is playing out or not. And if the forecast is not playing out, for example, I'm bullish right now, the S&P 500 for today. I'm going to look to trade long on my day trading charts and um, you know take advantage of it that way. But if I come to the screen later and prices are heading lower and we're going through that support level, I'm just not going to trade, right? Because it's not confirming my thesis and there's no no need to trade when the thesis is not being confirmed because you get plenty of really good opportunities when everything's lining up and the market's telling you, hey, this is a go, right? We're confirming your thesis, you know, get in, take advantage of this, get your money, walk out of the casino, don't come back for the rest of the day. That's the key. All right. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'll go ahead and film my session later and uh, upload it again. I'm just uploading videos, putting them up, taking them down, testing out a few different formats, testing out the new studio, the new mic, the new webcam, all this kind of stuff. So just bear with me while I play around with this for a while and kind of getting back into my own trading as well. I've been busy with some other companies I've been setting up. Um, so excited to just kind of get back into it with a challenge, see how we can do right now across those three challenge accounts. I've got, uh, I think, 2200 in profit on one. 2100 on another one and 18 or 1900 on another one. So I'm, you know, about a little more than two thirds of the way to the goal of passing the challenge. Like I said yesterday, if I pass that challenge, I don't even know if I'm going to accept the live account because, you know, why am I going to pay some company money to let me trade another demo? Sure. If I make money on that demo, I guess I get paid, but better, better just trade my own account. Just kind of doing the demo for fun. See what these companies are all about. See how the fills are. Yesterday, my fills were pretty good. So curious to see how that plays out. I'm also curious if I pass these funded accounts, which is a big if, you know, this is a tough bar. It's a high bar, uh, even for experienced traders, right? They're asking you to put up basically uh, 150 to 200 percent on your money uh, before you get your first payout, really over 200 percent. If you think about the numbers and how it actually breaks down. Right. And if you can do that, you know, 
let's say you do that in a couple of weeks like I'm doing now. Well, obviously it's possible. There are some people doing it, but you got to take a whole lot of risk to put up those kind of numbers. And the odds of blowing out are obviously very high, which is why these, um, you know, prop firms are printing money because most people blow up. There are the few that get through, but you've got to take a lot of risk to do it. So, uh, but I am curious if I do pass these challenges, which I'm getting close to doing, I might flip over to their quote unquote live account just because I'm kind of curious to see what kind of fills you get once real money's on the line, right? Because it's not the real market. You're trading on a demo and um, where games can be played, games will be played. So I'm kind of curious to test that out. All right, everybody, take care. And uh, I'll be back later with the video on how the live trading went. Wish you all a bit of luck today with your trading. Take care. Stop the recording. Gotta get used to this software. All right, see ya. Bye-bye.